Okay, so today what we're going to talk about are, is Chapter 1, Section 4, Phases and Eclipses. The words we're going to look at today are Phase, Eclipse, Solar Eclipse, Umbra, Penumbra, and Lunar Eclipse. Okay, so our first sheet I have here is, says, what causes the phases of the moon? So here's an illustration that I made, and you can see here there's the sun, the earth right here. I labeled it E, and I put an equator around it, and then I drew four moons, but really it's just one at a time. And you can see I drew the circle going counterclockwise because it's the way the moon goes around the earth. So the motion of the moon around the earth causes the phases. So first of all, a phase is one of the different apparent shapes of the moon as seen from earth. And um, what we need to realize is that it is the sun that reflects on the moon and that's how we're able to see it and that it depends on how much of the sun is lighting it up and as the moon goes around the earth it changes its angle um, of how much light is reflected on that part of the moon. Here are some facts. Okay, and I'm actually going to lift this up. Okay, so fact that the moon rotates and revolves at the same rate um, and a rotate, just to remember from the other section, is when an object spins on its axis. So the moon spins on its axis at the same rate that it revolves, and revolves means to go around. So when one object goes around another object that's revolved. So the rate that it's going around is the same rate that it's spinning, and because of that we see the same side of the moon at all times and therefore which is really interesting is that the moon's day is the same amount of time as the moon year and that rate that it's moving is 27.3 days of our earth days so 27.3 of our earth days goes by and you have a moon day and a year okay another fact that's uh, we should write down is that how much light reflects on the moon is how much we see. So those are the um, what causes the phase. But let's get into some more um, detail about that. Okay, so what we have here is that there is the sunlight, there is an earth, and then there are eight major phases that we're going to discuss. Okay, and you can easily um, refer back to your book. Um, they'll have the same picture and it's actually the graph. The graphic is really nice. Um, but I'm just going to bring this into view and then I'm going to bring this circle around one piece at a time up close. Okay, so first of all, you'll notice again that the Earth is in the middle. The Moon is going around counterclockwise. I have numbered each phase, one through eight, and we're going to just briefly go through the names. Okay, so here we have one, new moon, two, waxing crescent, three, the first quarter, four, coming around the side of the circle, waxing gibbous, five, the full moon, it's the opposite side of the new moon, then you have six, waning gibbous, seven, third quarter, and then eight waning crescent. Okay, so as you can see, all of the moons are shaded in on that one side. Okay, and it's the same side. So from outer space, this is the perspective of the sunlight shining always on that one side because we always see the same side of the moon, and the other side will be in darkness. Okay, so from our point of view from the Earth, if you look at this picture here, okay, so what's happening for the new moon is we're looking out, this side is dark, this side is lit up. We are an aligned sun, moon, earth, and so therefore, for our perspective out on this dark side, we do not see the moon. It's there, it's lit up on this side. 
when it gets to the waxing crescent because if you if I cover it up like this with my finger you will see this corner at the top okay over here I'm going to cover the bottom half we'll see this side okay actually what I'm going to do with you when you have all the notes in classes I will actually go through the side we will see and we'll talk about that in better uh, detail the waxing gibbous same thing but what's going to happen is you're going to see more of it and then the full moon this one is excellent because the sunlight is lighting up this side and when we're looking at earth during um, right over here from this point of view you can see the whole thing you can see the whole side of the moon this is a waning gibbous third quarter so it would just be this bottom half right here and then waning crescent so it would be just that sliver that corner that you would see out from earth the waxing of the moon is when the moon gets larger so as it's coming around this way we see more and more of it so we see none we see a sliver and then as we come around more gets lit up until we see the full moon the waning gibbous the moon gets smaller from here this point we see the whole moon and then as it turns around this side the angle of the light gets smaller and smaller until it's the new moon and it's, we completely cannot see it. Okay, those are the eight major phases. All right, the next terms are solar eclipse. And a solar eclipse is, first of all, eclipse is the blocking or partial blocking or total blocking of one object in space by another. And a solar eclipse is the blocking of sunlight to Earth that occurs when the moon is directly between the sun and the Earth. So here we have the sun, moon, and Earth, and this is during a new moon. Okay, and as you can see what I did here for the moon is I made this triangle and two outside triangles. The inside triangle is a complete shadow, okay, or blockage of light and it is this inner shadow here and on the earth I put a little X and that's where the total eclipse would occur on earth. These outside triangles are called penumbra and penumbras are the part of the shadow surrounding the darkest part and that gives you a partial eclipse. Okay so this is a solar eclipse the sun's light is being blocked we cannot see it on earth this point we should be in the daylight, but the, um, the moon blocks that light. Over here, I just want to add a little note for the solar eclipse. The moon makes a small shadow, so um, because it's just making this tiny little shadow or partially blocking the sunlight right there, um, it's least likely to, uh, for us to see a solar eclipse. Okay, so this is during the day. It's during a new moon. Right over here, there is a blockage of light from the moon blocking where the sunlight should go and this is about four to seven minutes okay and then a lunar eclipse is the blocking of sunlight to the moon that occurs when the earth is directly between the moon the sun and the moon so here I have the lunar eclipse sunlight here's the earth okay let me back it up so you can see the entire picture and the sun is on this in my picture is on this side coming in I've darkened this side of the earth right here and then over here the shadow from the earth is blocking the light where the new moon I'm sorry excuse me the full moon should be over here so first of all I just want to let you know that I have labeled P for partial on this diagram and T for total eclipse so where the moon is when it's in its full moon phase and this alignment the full moon should be seen and the earth's shadow gets in the way and this happens only every two to five years that this alignment perfect alignment will happen with the sun on this side the earth and then the full moon over here and if it gets right in the line 
has to be right in this line. This is a total eclipse, T for total. And on either side of that, if it's almost in the line, these P's are partial. So if it's close, you can have part of the moon um, getting blocked out. And that's why I have moon's orbit over here is labeled in this path. Okay, so another note and the last note to make is this lunar eclipse is happening during a full moon. Okay, so let me just put down the whole sheet and so you can see that in the frame. Um, and I just want to make sure that you had um, an easy time writing notes. Please tell me at class if you have any questions. Thank you very much.